health red flags today. So I am just looking for Elise and hopefully we can get her on here pretty quickly. Lovely weather here in far north Queensland. Sorry if you're down south and you're cold. We have sunshine and warmth. <laughs> Been out in the garden all morning and um, just enjoying this gorgeous weather, getting lots done. So that's nice. Ah, oh, there man. she is. <laughs> I had to keep trying, but she's fine. Yeah, right here. yeah, I kept saying that I've sent her again. I don't know. Anyway, oh. here we are. We are here. Welcome everyone and um, Elise is like, she's my favourite expert on gut health. She's amazing um, and a lot of you probably already follow her. Um, she's been a big help to us on our gut health journey and we run a program together called the Gut Health Formula. Oops, sorry, don't want to wobble that. Um, and one of the questions we get asked a lot is how do I know if I've got gut health issues? Like and where do you start? So take it away, Elise. Yes, well, it is a very big question and it's a very big one to answer because when people ask me, how do I know if I've got gut issues? Sometimes my answer is pretty much, is there anything going on with you? Because um, it can be as simple as that, that pretty much most things that can be going wrong with our health will some, in some way be traced back to what's going on in our gut. Um, and also the fact that when we talk about gut health, we are talking about so much more than that. So I do say specialize in gut health and I do call Well Belly Health Clinic um, a gut health clinic. But we really, what we're focusing on is so much more than that. It really comes down to looking at the gut as a central, kind of central part of our health but that it's impacting on everything to do with our health. So we're not separating out one thing and say, oh, we're just going to focus on gut health. We're really focusing on the health of the whole system when we do that. So um, some of the red flags we can look for. So I'm kind of, I'm splitting it into systems of the body um, in a way. Um, so the really obvious ones is digestive. So digestive symptoms, of course, we're going to relate that to gut health. Um, so if we're looking at things like bloating, comfort, pain, um, so if you're getting any of those kind of digestive symptoms, you may have some kind of issues with your stool. So, um, constipation, diarrhea, something like that going on, pale stools as well. Um, things like reflux. So if you're getting reflux or feeling really full after you eat or heartburn. So there's some really obvious ones that you're actually getting symptoms in the digestive system and you may have been diagnosed with something um an issue in the digestive system like um ibs or um some kind of inflammatory bowel disease or something along those lines so there's some fairly obvious ones um nausea is one i'll throw in there as well even loss of appetite too um also Cravings, so like sugar cravings, that's a sign something's going on as well. So they're all some of the digestive symptoms we can look um, we can look. For. Um, someone's asked for more info on pale stools. Um, so pale stools are a sign that you are not producing enough bile or bile is not flowing properly. So bile is produced in the gallbladder and uh, sorry, produced in the liver, stored in the gallbladder. And when we eat a fatty meal, it moves through the bile ducts into the digestive system to digest the fat in that meal. Um, so it's a really intelligent system. Um, it also carries toxins from the liver into the digestive system to leave in the stool as well. So if we're not having enough bile flow, then stools are going to be pale in colour because it is the bile that makes the stool brown. Um, so yeah, that's one of the things. And then that has a knock on effect of a whole bunch of other issues you can have if you're, if you are not digesting fats properly, uh, if bile isn't flowing properly, there's a whole lot of other issues that can come from that as well. And that can be part of the reason for nausea too, can't it? If you're not that, digesting yeah. well. Yeah. So the fats can kind of sit in your stomach. Um, this is one we cover a lot in the gut health formula. Yeah, so, so many questions it ends up a big topic of conversation because fat digestion issues is something that a lot of people have issues with. So you can get nausea, um, feel, feel sick when you eat fatty foods, um, constipation, dry skin, they're all signs of fat digestion issues. 
so so and even so foods we're talking about not like hot chips from the takeaway like mm. avocado and eggs you know yeah 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 just like the fat on meat and you might think oh no they don't make me sick i just don't like them um but it's probably still the case that if you feel a bit put off um by fats in foods then it's likely you're actually having trouble digesting those fats um so another some more signs some more red flags nutrient deficiencies so if you are chronically anemic um, or if your vitamin d is always low if you're having issues holding on to those so anemic is uh low in iron so if you have issues with these things, it's not a matter of just needing to go and get an iron infusion or something along those lines or needing or that you just have to supplement. There's an underlying reason why you are, you have that tendency to be deficient in those things. And it's got to do with what's going on in your gut. So it could be stomach acid is low. It's usually a multitude of things. If the gut, If the gut lining isn't healthy, you're not going to be absorbing your nutrients properly so if you do suffer with nutrient deficiencies and you can look for signs of nutrient deficiencies in other ways too the health of your hair skin and nails they're a really good sign because they're kind of down low on the importance list of our body taking care of things high on the importance list is looking after all of our organs low on the importance list is things like hair skin and nails that aren't aren't like crucial to our survival so if your hair skin and nails aren't very healthy there's a good sign that you're probably deficient in some nutrients and poor diet is going to be a reason that's um what's happening that if you're eating well and you're like why am i still deficient in these things i'm trying everything or i go and get iron infusions which i don't um recommend um but going down those roads those roads and then just becoming deficient again there's something more going on there you need to get to the root cause so another red flag is food intolerances so if you're intolerant to any foods like dairy eggs nuts they're common ones but also other kinds of intolerances like histamine intolerance uh you may or may not have heard of that it's not too important if you haven't um FODMAP intolerance, salicylate intolerances, all these kinds of intolerances. It's not just a matter of, okay, I'm intolerant to this thing now, so I need to avoid it and I need to remove all that from my diet um, and that that will somehow be the answer. It is not the answer. Mm -hmm. uh, we, we shouldn't need to go and just avoid these foods, especially like with FODMAPs, you avoid so many whole foods and a lot of people end up on very processed food diets doing that. Um, so it's more a case of why are these intolerances developing and it's because there is a gut issue. So it's a matter of actually addressing what that underlying gut issue is um, and resolving that so you can have those foods. And for a lot of people, they'll find that, oh, I used to be able to eat all of these things and now I can't. Um, there is something going on there. It's not just a matter of remove all those foods and that will somehow solve your problem because it won't. And what most people find is that they follow low histamine diets or they follow like um, low FODMAP diets and they end up getting worse and more intolerant to things. So another red flag is your hormone health. So if you are experiencing a lot of symptoms around your cycle, if you have re other reproductive issues going on like endometriosis, PCOS, hormone imbalances, um, hormone can also mean like sleep hormones as well. So if there's issues around sleep, stress hormones. So the health of our hormones has a lot to do with the health of our gut. It's impacted by so much more as well. Like our, um, I mentioned stress then. So if there is a lot of stress in your life, that's going to have a knock-on effect on everything. So lots of stress is going to mean it's going to throw out the health of your gut as well. Um, and have a big impact on your hormones because when you're stressed, you need to produce a lot of stress hormones that steals from sex hormones and sleep hormones and um, puts everything out of whack. So stress is a really big one. Um, so someone asked, what if you've had these intolerances since birth? Um, they're still a gut issue. So, um, yeah, we've worked with a lot of that in my clinic, Well Belly Health Clinic. 
um, people who have had egg allergies their whole life, you know, love to have those allergies. So it is good to know what is going on in the gut. Um, uh, and someone says that their husband suffers from gout. Do you know anything about this relating to gut health? Yes, absolutely. So gout is built up of uric acid. It has to do with the health of the liver and the kidneys. Um, so yes, it absolutely, like I said at the beginning, I always, we'd always say the term gut health. We really mean everything that's going on. Um, so yes, it, it is something that we do work with um, very successfully is gout. Um, and someone asked, oh, where'd it go? I, oh, why isn't it disappearing? Let's see if I can find it. My husband, oh, the, I, the last one I saw was gout. Yeah, no, there was just one after that. I've had something and then um, I'm not able to get it in front of me properly. Um, I have low iron and very brittle thumbnails after having this mostly... Most of my life I had an iron infusion, but it didn't make much difference. What can you advise? You need to work on the health of your gut. So there's no short answer there, um, but there's probably going to be um, a few things going on. So there's probably going to be um, issues with stomach acid and there's going to be issues with the digestive system. So um, there could be parasites going on as well. There could be metals. So there could be a few things going on, but... The great thing is, is that you can always, you always start with the foundations first. So we'll talk mm. a little bit more about that in a minute. Um, but yeah, that's basically what Joe and I focus on in our program is starting with those foundations first. Which will um, help with all of those things. Exactly. And that's the reason we work like that. Um, I, I kind of get it, this thing coming up, but then... It, Really I can read you another one in a sec when you're yeah, ready. Yeah, there was another one. Um, some I can just see the Wait, last after a high fat meal. Is that yeah, related? I, maybe you read the questions because they're yeah, just I can, fun. that's fine. Yeah, cool. Yeah, so that was just is queasiness after a high fat meal related to bile production or something else. Um, Elisa's internet looks like it's thinking, so I can answer that one. Yes. Um, that's very common if you don't have good bile production. Um, you can definitely be queasy after a high-fat meal. My son wouldn't eat pork or eggs for a long time and we worked on his bile production and now he's a lot better with that. Um, but, yeah, it does make a difference. There she is. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Um, so, yeah, you let me know the questions. But, yeah, I heard that one about the nausea after a fatty meal. That's definitely yep. going to be bile-related, yeah. Um, okay, somewhere here. What's the best way to test for these things and, and to understand what's happening, get a proper understanding for a 15-year-old? Uh, book in with my clinic. Um, <laughs> that's what we do, really, is find out the whole history. It's not as simple as just going, do this test, do this test. Mm. Um, we, we put a lot of weight on testing. Well, I don't, um, but Some. in the industry, a lot of weight is put on testing as being the answer or is going to give us all of the answers. Testing is very, very limited in what it can tell us. And what is much more valuable is someone with a lot of experience to look over the whole history and put the pieces together. No testing can do that for you. So um, that is what I see is absolutely invaluable. You need to get the right eyes looking at the situation and putting it all together. It's really more about clinical presentation than it is about a test result. And a lot of you will probably have already experienced that when you can Me. have, yeah, you can have done all of the testing and you might have piles of testing there right now with results and some doing anything for you. Um, and you just feel more and more overwhelmed and confused by well, what do I have to yeah. do for this and this and this and this and this issue when really it comes back to those foundational things, work on those first. Exactly. And then yeah. yeah, exactly. Um, any other questions, Joe? Yes. Um, how do you know if you have an allergy or a histamine intolerance? Um, so you'll generally know if like, so a true allergy is anaphylaxis. Um, anything else would be an intolerance. Um, so if you had an intolerance, you generally you'll know you have some kind of symptom with it and so you won't want to eat it. Um, so it's generally going to be that happening. Um, you, may, you may need to remove food for a while to then realise that you actually have an intolerance to it. 
But my concern is not trying to find all the foods that someone's intolerant to because all that tells us is that there's a gut issue. Um, it doesn't actually, like basically whatever food you eat most of, when you've got gut issues, you'll become intolerant to those foods because the gut lining is leaky. Those proteins from the foods are going through um, into the blood in the way the body doesn't recognize as food and starts reacting to it. So some of you may have experienced this, that you get food intolerance testing and you're like, oh my gosh, this is all the food I eat. So I don't like food intolerance testing for that reason either. Um, and that it's really about um, you've got to address the underlying gut issue. It's just telling you that there is one and you don't have to be living like that. So I guess if you're having severe, what they're asking is severe reactions to foods. Um, yeah. What do you do first? Yeah. So if you are having like severe like symptoms from eating certain foods, like there's definitely intolerance there. You do need to reduce those foods and then you need to address the underlying cause. Mm -hmm. um, so the steps that Joe and I take people through in the gut health formula, they are the first steps I take people through in the clinic as well. Um, mm -hmm. So it's about starting with healing and repairing the gut lining and, and going through those steps. Um, so they're really what everybody needs to do, no matter what you've got going on. And it may just be slightly different. Um, for some people, there may be just certain things we need to watch out for. And that's, um, we do cover all of that in the gut health formula as well, because there's lots of support. There's lots of practitioner support in there as well um, to make sure you're approaching things in the right way for you. Um, so yeah, first steps is really, um, if you are finding that there's stuff you are definitely reacting to, you need to reduce them to reduce the reactiveness, reduce or remove them. And then it's actually addressing your gut health. So um, things like meat stocks, which is something that we cover in depth in the program, is making and introducing meat stocks and starting those steps to heal and repair your gut. Best dietary tips when going into menopause? There's no straightforward ones. Um, oh, well, there is, which would be less sugar and processed foods, um, removing, like, yeah refined vegetable oils um like highly processed hydrogenated vegetable oils um limiting grains in your diet so really looking at whole food that's really the only broad recommendation dietary wise i would make leading into menopause and i but it's the same recommendation i'd make for anyone at any stage at stage of life is less to no processed foods and lots of good natural whole foods. It's so simple when it comes to diet. Mm. Is diverticulitis related to gut health? Absolutely it is. We work with that a lot in the clinic. So it is an inflammatory bowel disease. Um, so yes, definitely, definitely related to what's going on in the gut. And um, hay fever, that's already sort of been yep. mentioned. That's histamine reactions. Yeah. So um, that's another kind of red flag is looking at how the mm -hmm. immune system is responding. So if the immune system is overreactive, we call it atopic, then that is a sign that there's something going on with the gut. Um, and there's like two different arms of the immune system. And when you're kind of that hay fevery allergy type person, then the immune system's kind of like activated in a way okay. that it shouldn't be that's not how it should naturally function so it's definitely got to do with what's going on in the gut 80 percent or more of the immune system is underneath that thick mucus layer in the gut lining so a lot all the cells of our immune system is sitting in there so um if we've got yeah issues with the gut we're going to have issues with the immune system and there's it's like another snowball one um, that it has so many knock-on effects because it's going to affect the health of your liver, which affects the health of your immune system and your hormones and all those things. So um, it's really our whole, all of our systems are connected. So yes, um, someone asked the name of my clinic. Well, Belly Health Clinic is the name of my clinic. Um, someone else, I just saw a question as well about psoriasis. We have worked with psoriasis yes. so many times. So and it yeah, so that's another skin. That's another red flag is skin issues. Um, so psoriasis. About hives as well. Someone asked about hives. Yeah, yeah. Hives are the immune system. Um, can be a sign of histamine issues. So, yeah, that's another one where the immune system 
um, is overreactive. So yeah, things going on in the skin, psoriasis, dermatitis, eczema, they are all signs of what is going on in the gut and can be resolved. Here's an interesting one. Do you find hypermobility impacts gut health? Um, hypermobility, I wouldn't know. It's not something that I've found to directly impact gut health, but I would think that your gut health can impact on hypermobility because it's got to do with connective tissue and the integrity of your connective tissue. Um, so if someone's got hypermobility, there is something going on with their connective tissue. Um, right. And when we have when we're working on the gut, we're working on connective tissue through our whole body. So mm. that's as well if you have, um, if you find you don't have a lot of collagen in your skin, if you find you sprain easily, so like if you, and if you like, like sprain or tear ligaments easily, um, that's all to do with the connective tissue as well. Somebody asked about bone density. Bone density absolutely, definitely has a lot to do with gut health. Um, it has a lot to do with fat digestion as well, that I mentioned before, because our fat soluble nutrients are very, very important for our bone health. Um, mm -hmm. So you can actually see great improvements in your bone density when you do work on the health of your gut and you do make sure you're absorbing all of your nutrients properly. Mm -hmm. And meat stocks are a great way to be improving your bone health as well. Um, diet drinks, yes, they're terrible. Um, so someone asked if diet drinks affect your gut health. Yes, all those artificial sweeteners are, I'd rather you have sugar um, than mm. have all artificial sweeteners. Um, how do you test for inflammation due to mold exposure? Um, it's not so, that's, you don't necessarily need to go and test for inflammation. Um, mold is a really, really big topic and especially when it comes to testing. Mm. One, one first step, I would say go to Toxic Mold website. If you think you've got mold issues, go to the Toxic Mold and or Surviving Mold websites and follow the steps in there. So first step will be a VCS test, which is vis visual contrast sensitivity test. Um, then there are some blood tests that you can do. So it's not so much about testing for inflammation, although that'll be part of it. There's other things to test. Um, but it, yeah, it can be a really challenging one. But if you uh, know you've been exposed to mold and you know you've got health issues, it's probably um, it's probably an issue. Um, someone said they're having trouble finding my website. I'll tag my yeah. um, Instagram page. Yeah, I'll tag my Instagram page. So you can find it through my Instagram. Um, and then also I've just tagged my Instagram page, the Well Belly Health Clinic. And our website is wellbellyhealth.com.au. Uh, so check that out as well. And we do do free initial consults. So that's how you would and, start our clinic. And, is, a free um, is it weekly or fortnightly lives Q&As? Oh, uh, yeah, we do live Q&A every fortnight. So, um, and you'll see that on my website as well. When you go to my website and you go to the resources, so the Well Belly Health so www.wellbellyhealth.com.au and you go to resources, you'll see in there all the ones we've done so far and we and, and all the topics we've covered. We've covered a lot. So we do them every night. Mm -hmm. And then you can register in the events. Um, you can register for the ones that are coming up. Um, so a couple of other red flags I was going to cover and then I can answer more questions. I'll go quickly through the red flags because it seems lots okay. of questions and it's good just to be able to answer the questions. Um, so I've covered digestive, nutrient deficiencies, intolerances, hormone health, mental health is another really big one that you might not relate to your gut health. But if you are having anxiety, depression, um, difficulty focusing, brain fog, um, learning difficulties, uh, behavioral difficulties, um, these all have to do with the gut as well. So there's a very strong connection between the gut and the gut actually sends more signals to the brain than the brain does to the gut. So it's more like the gut is actually running the show. Um, so you have a really big connection there. And that's something we've seen a lot in clinic as well is amazing changes in people's mental health. And that's definitely the case for me. Anxiety and depression was something that was a problem in my 10 years. Um, and you know, there is still life's ups and downs, but in general is much better. Um, sleep issues. So 
sleep is one. Um, you are having issues with sleep. There can be a variety of reasons. Uh, but what's going on in the gut can have a really big impact there. And then the other one I had was energy. So if you don't have good energy, if you're not waking up and feeling ready for the day, um, then chances are there is something going on in the gut. Like, if, yeah, basically if you're not feeling like you're thriving, then there's there's something going on there. Mm. So, Lots more questions. Um, what's the very first step I should take towards healing my gut? Removing processed foods, toxic oils. Yeah. So moving to a whole food diet, following quirky cooking, which you already do. So you've done the first step. Um, and buying Joe's cookbooks, life changing food, <laughs> food. Especially simple healing food, at least. Especially Lisa. simple healing food. In- great gut health <laughs> section in there. Um, and cooking from those. That is the best first step you could possibly do. Yeah. And we do, um, when in our program, we have the first week we really focus on reducing stress in your life, which is not just stress as in, oh, I'm so stressed out. It's like being super busy and never stopping for a break. And it's um, food stress and toxic overloads in your environment and your water and all of that kind of stress. So we um, focus on that for the whole first week of the program. So important. And so many people would say it's the first week just makes it for them. And then we, we're always reflecting on it throughout the program. Everyone's always kind of reflecting back on that first week and how much it sets you up for how you approach it. So something Joe and I are really passionate about in the way we deliver this program is that it just has to be sustainable and manageable and doable for just everyday people and everyday family. And most of the people in our um, program are mums with children and lives and work and and so many things going on so we really kind of take the overwhelm away from it and really focus on what steps you can take and being really kind to yourself so we really focus on how to approach your health not here's all the steps and you need to follow them and if you're not doing them then you're not doing enough um we really are teaching how over your whole life you can approach your health in a totally different way that doesn't have to be so stressful and overwhelming. Mm, It's very much about mindset and small steps and um, fitting things into your own life and your season of life and, you know, what your family will eat and adding in the good things before trying to do this gigantic change of taking out all this food. So we really focus on adding in first um, and then doing those healthier swaps. And, yeah, it's, it's very doable. We've had so much feedback from people saying um, it's different than any program they've ever done because it's very um, gentle and um, it's just like a, a blueprint for life, really. It's not like a do this for eight weeks and then go back to what you were doing. <laughs> no, and we hear from people that did it because this is our third year of running the gut health formula. It'd yeah. be our fourth year. Might be our fourth. It's our fourth and, year. It's oh, our my fourth goodness. Year. And we've, we've done gut three health. to four intakes each year. So we've done it a lot. <laughs> yeah, I know. It's amazing. Um, wow. And we're still getting so – we still get so much feedback from people that did the first round that it's, mm. that it's continuing to have an impact. And that was our dream when we created it. We know we could create something that it's like eight weeks, follow all these steps, and you'll see radical improvement in eight weeks. But then you're hardcore just like, oh, diet. <laughs> we know we, we could do that, but we didn't want to do that. We wanted to create a program where, in four years' time, which is where we're at now, there's people who did it four years ago that are still saying that program changed my life. It totally changed the way I view my health, totally yeah. changed the way I approach things. Um, so it's changing other aspects of your life as well. And what we do see on the food, because we do focus on the food side of things, and the the pictures people are posting, and my child ate this thing that I just never thought they could possibly eat. Like, it's really exciting. And seeing symptoms change for people in that eight weeks, knowing that they're only at the beginning and they've still got, um, you know, there's still so much they're going to learn and do and implement over that time. And it mm. does go for eight weeks of live content but it's 12 months of access to all the content so it's really a 12-month program because you get to stay um 
yeah, you get to keep access to everything and rewatch any of the lives and, and look at absolutely everything for 12 months. So that's important to us too, that no one is feeling rushed. So how people participate in the program is then really up to them. It's like, I, if you know time, there's time pressure there and you need to make more space, you may just start with attending the lives, watching everything, taking in information and just making really slight changes and just really focusing on learning. Um, and that may be what you really do during that eight weeks. And then in that 12 months following that, you may then just be t taking those steps and implementing uh, it in an enjoyable way rather than a stressful way. Other people start the eight weeks and they do everything. And that's great too. Um, they see lots of good outcomes, but you really have to work with where you are at and what's best for you. And that's, we spend the first couple of weeks really, really honing in on that point that um, don't overpressure yourself or create a situation where you where you can then beat yourself up about it. It's really about just approaching the program in a way that really, really works for you. Yeah. One of the questions that was sent in um, was actually a few people asked what time are the live videos, you know, will, will it be in school hours? Um, so I'll just quickly explain that. The first live video is at 1 p.m. on Friday the 10th and that's when Elise and I um, get on and welcome everybody and have a chat. Um, and then every week there's either a video with Elise at, I think it's a Tuesday, 1 p.m. This is... Mm -hmm. Sydney time um, yep. or there's a video with me on the Saturday afternoon at 2 p.m. Queensland time, Sydney time, same at the moment. Um, and Elise very much focuses on the nutrition and the, all the difficult medical questions and the, you know, how do I start implementing these changes? And I focus more on the food and practical lifestyle changes because um, you know, you can have all the information, but not know how to apply it. So I'm very much about, okay, let's get in the kitchen and cook together. This is how I use meat stocks in everyday meals. This is how um, I changed over my fats to use better fats. And so really practical cook ups together. And it's a lot of fun. Yeah. Oh, and, and the lives are recorded. So you can watch them later. You don't have to be there live. You don't. And you can even if you want us to talk about something in live or if you've got a question you'd like us to answer in the live, you can be asking those questions and making sure that we cover that and then you can go back and watch the live. And then if you're watching the live and you have questions while you're watching it, you can still ask them then as well. So it really doesn't matter um, and it just happens a lot that people can't attend all yeah. of the live. You want to be able to do it in your own time when it suits and that's totally fine. Yeah. We still have a few more questions but we probably won't be able to answer them all in one live but don't forget there is lives when's your next live for welcoming so my health live will be next tuesday oh good there you go so you can go over to well belly health Club. allergies in the immune system allergies and the immune system cool. yeah so yeah um and i know lots of people are asking where to start go to my website and the resources section and there's just so much info there so uh www.wellbellyhealth.com.au um, and then if you follow me on instagram at first, and my clinic at well Belly health clinic um we've, we're always sharing lots of info and so happy to answer questions when you have them i often put questions in my story where you can like mm. the question and then I'll answer them in my stories um, on both the, my nutritionist page and my clinic page. Um, so, yeah, you can jump on those as well and ask questions that I'm always happy to share info. Oh, you'll also see, in, um, I think it's on my Elise Nutritionist page, there is a highlights with Q&A. Um, and yes. I say Q&As in there. So you can go and flick through and see if anything's relevant for you as well. Um, someone asked which of my cookbooks you'd recommend. If you're Simple working on <laughs> Simple Healing Food, if you're working on gut health, Simple Healing Food is the one to start with because it's very simple and very healing. No, um, it's very focused on gut health. And there's a section at the start where Elise has written down the basics of things like red flags, how to begin, um, how to not overwhelm yourself, what gut health means, what it, you know, what to do. Um, so it's a really good 
beginner's book for gut health. And if you're already working on your gut health and you know a lot about it already, um, there's lots of new recipes there for you to try. So yay. <laughs> it's my favorite book. I love it. Thank you. Um, and someone asked, could you cover how you can not allow outside influence to have a reaction of stress in you when you remove circumstances from your life that stress you? That's a really big topic. Maybe we should do a um, podcast on stress sometime, Elise. Yeah, I do love talking about that. So, yes. Yeah. We've both um, learned the hard way how to deal with stress. <laughs> so that's, you know, that's how you learn, isn't it? Um, yeah. So, yeah, we'd be happy to do a podcast on that because that's quite a big topic. Yeah, but I have recently done. Um, I have recently done three episodes on anxiety on my podcast. So um, the first two are things that we help found helpful for reducing anxiety in our own family, and the third one is with naturopath Jules Galloway talking about the um, you know things that naturopaths help people with to work through anxiety. So um, you might like to have a look at those on Quirky Cooking Chats on YouTube. Awesome. Um, and someone asked if they need a Thermomix to follow the program. No, all my recipes, some of my old ones on the website have just a Thermomix version and I need to go in and put conventional methods as well. But my books have my life changing food and simple healing food have both methods, conventional and Thermomix and the program has both methods. So you don't need a Thermomix, no. Sorry, um, someone so asked. If it's <laughs> recorded on Tuesday the 7th, the live that I'm doing, all our lives are recorded. You can, anyone that you register for, you'll get the recording emailed to you. Otherwise, you can go to the resources section on the wellbellyhealth.com.au website, um, go to resources and the lives, recordings, live Q&A recordings, um, and all the ones we've done in the past are there too. And the, any one new one we do will get added to there straight after. So they are all there, all recorded register you'll get it emailed to you um yeah it doesn't matter if you can't attend live can i just ask one more question because this lady's asked twice um her two-year-old has sleep issues someone suggested check for salicylate sensitivity um what do you suggest i would suggest looking with our clinic um so especially <laughs> with someone that young i won't just make generalized recommendations um but it's going to be working on the health of the gut because there definitely could be salicylate issues, but just cutting out salicylates, you'll just go down a slippery slope of removing things and not actually resolving the underlying issue. So you need to resolve the underlying issue. Yeah. And no, Simple Healing Foods is not available as an ebook. Not yet, but I'm going to work on that. <laughs> <laughs> so beautiful in the flesh. It's such, it is. It's got a lovely cover well, with embossing. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah, um, if you've got any more questions that we didn't manage to answer, um, go and have a look at our Instagram pages and videos and website. But if you've got any questions, you can contact us through our Instagram or through the other channels on our sites. Thanks, guys. We oh. will put, I'll put the link um, for the gut health formula below. But basically, if you want to know more about it, you can go to our um profiles and click on the link through there um, and you'll find all the information you need and scroll right down to the bottom of the page and you'll see an overview of every single week on the program so you know exactly what it covers awesome awesome cool thanks joe thanks elise thanks everybody see ya bye